Hey everyone, today we're taking an in-depth look at Merlin AI, the powerful new AI assistant that can help you write, summarize, code, translate, and so much more, all from your browser. I've been using Merlin for a few weeks now, and I'm excited to share my experience and walk you through how to get the most out of this awesome tool. Let's dive in. Okay, so first off, you may be wondering, what the heck even is Merlin AI? Well, it's an AI-powered browser extension that brings the power of ChatGPT, GPT-4, GPT-4.0, Claude 3.5, and other AI models to any website. And it can do a lot of things. It has writing tools to help with emails, Twitter posts, paraphrasing, grammar, translation, rewording, blog posts, comments, essays, and more. It has research tools that can summarize articles and videos, get transcripts, help you code, work as an AI content and plagiarism detector. It has image tools, including an image generator, avatar generator, logo generator, heck, even a tattoo art generator. In total, it has over 70 AI tools. It's a behemoth. It's craziness, all the things Merlin can do. If you check out the extension store, you will see that it has over 1 million users. So it's pretty well trusted and been in the game for some time now. There's a totally free version available with paid upgrades for power users who want more features. So enough with the background, let's start talking about how we can go about installing Merlin AI and giving it a test run. Merlin AI's website is getmerlin.in. I'll leave a link in the description. From the homepage, you can click on add Merlin extension, which will then bring you to the Chrome Web Store. Or alternatively, you can go directly to the Chrome Web Store and search for Merlin AI. Once you are there, you can then click Add to Chrome, then click the Add Extension button. And finally, after installing the Merlin Web Extension, you will be brought to a page where you can create a free account using your Google account or an email. Click Sign Up and you're ready to go. Let's give it a whirl. Alrighty then, let's start going over some of Merlin AI's features now. You can activate Merlin on any web page using three different methods. The first is by pressing Command plus M on a Mac, or by pressing Control plus M for Windows. The second method is by clicking on the Merlin widget present on the bottom right section of every web page. And finally, the third method is to pin the extension on the top right corner of your web browser, and then click on the Merlin icon. Now, Merlin works in a similar manner as ChatGPT and other chatbots in that you can have a conversation about just about anything. You can use Merlin directly on the getmerlin.in website or on any website on the World Wide Web. Let's start off on Merlin AI's website. Here, for example, I can generate an image. I'll type Tokyo Neon Lights. Okay, so nothing extraordinary there, but let's keep going. You can also chat about anything under the sun. Let's type, robotics, what's the latest in robotics? Are we in the iRobot film yet? And Merlin will give you the latest info available. Now you'll notice at the top, there are three options for web access, which are off, turbo, and in-depth. And this is where you grant Merlin AI the ability to access the latest and greatest information on the internet. Next to that, there are options for various models, including GPT-4.0, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, Gemini, and more. For the purpose of this demonstration, let's go ahead and choose the Turbo option for web access and GPT-4.0 for the model type. Both of these options are available for free. Now let's try Merlin on another website. Let's head on over to the Wikipedia website, and specifically this article about quantum computing, which is known for being a complicated topic. What's cool about Merlin AI is that you can actually summarize web content and have interactive conversations with websites. This is good when there is a lot of information to sift through, or if you're having difficulty finding specific information, it saves a lot of time and helps with understanding complex topics. You can do research quick and just go over the important stuff. And for someone like myself, all of this aids tremendously in content creation. So let's look again at this article on quantum mechanics here on the Wikipedia website. If we bring up the Merlin interface, it gives us an option to chat with this web page. Let's hit it. And then select 
give me a summary. Merlin then gives me a quick breakdown of this article by giving me a summary and key points, which helps me in my understanding of quantum mechanics. So having this ability to chat with any web page online in live real time is a pretty cool feature in my opinion. It has its usefulness for sure. But it's not just web articles that Merlin AI can summarize. It can also summarize YouTube videos. Let's take a look at this YouTube video from Big Think that has Michio Kaku explaining why quantum computing is the next revolution. You'll notice since we have Merlin AI that there is a summarize this video button on the right of the video as well as below it. This helps you summarize any long or short form video be it with or without subtitles. Let's click on the summarize this video button and see what it comes up with. All right, so as we can see, Merlin AI came up with a nice little summary of the YouTube video with timestamps and key points. It also gives you an option to expand the summary, which gives you the most important highlights of each section. You can even go deeper by chatting with the summary and asking follow-up questions on the information provided. So for example, let's ask Merlin, what is Michio Kaku's educational background? and you will get that exact information. Not only that, but Merlin allows you to get a transcript that is much easier to read and navigate than the one that YouTube itself provides you with. If you wanna take all this one step further, then you can actually create a tweet, a LinkedIn post, or even write an entire blog from the video, all with the click of a button. What used to take days and or weeks to research now can be done in seconds and or hours. So let's say we wanna write a blog post about this specific video. All we would have to do is click the generate blog from this video and we're off. Let's see what it comes up with. Pretty easy, right? Now let's take a look at a more humorous aspect of what Merlin AI can do. I'm talking about the Twitter fab bar which is basically a feature that allows you to come up with responses and tweets that are formulated a certain way according to your desires. You can make a dad joke or use a funny tone. I swear all these AI tools are taking away our ability to discern what is even real anymore. Do you know someone who is always witty as hell online, cracking jokes and being a wise guy? Well, now you can be that guy or girl too all with the click of a button. I'm not really a huge fan of this. I really think AI is taking away some key aspects of what makes up our individual personalities online. It's getting harder and harder every day to discern what is real online. It's almost just better to assume that everything online is AI unless proven otherwise. But with all that being said, it is a rather amusing capability, not one that I will personally be using, but nonetheless amusing. And the fun in games isn't just limited to Twitter, AKA X. You can also create AI responses on LinkedIn, which I'm sure as you all know, is the most real place on the internets. No fake personas or phonies there, let me tell you. No siree Bob. Merlin AI allows you to come up with a positive reply or a thoughtful reply and so forth and so on. Can you barely speak English and have trouble coming up with an understandable sentence? No worries, bud. You can now sound just like millions of other corporate shills with the push of an AI button. So as much as I love the research aspects of some AI tools, I, again, am not a fan of AI tools that try to take over what is in the realm of individual personalities. Personal ain't so personal anymore, folks. Welcome to the AI age. Are we having fun yet? You can also come up with AI-generated responses for connecting with LinkedIn personas with a feature called ProConnect. Gmail is another place where you can click on replies and compose emails with the click of a button. According to Merlin AI, this helps you reply quickly and as per your emotions. Of course, the words written aren't actually your own words that you yourself came up with to express your emotions, but that of an AI. But hey, I guess that doesn't really matter to some at this stage in the game. And finally, we have the Facebook fab bar where Merlin AI gives you dedicated buttons and prompts to help you create posts and comments. Good thing I don't use Facebook. The age of AI is here, folks. If you want to avoid all this type of wordplay and generated AI communication, my advice would be to arrange an in real life meeting instead, or simply set up a video call, or I know this sounds crazy, but an actual phone call 
where you converse aloud with audible words. Yes, that still exists in this text crazy world, but IRL is still my favorite. It's really difficult to hide your true personality or physical being with AI in a face-to-face -face meeting. At least it's difficult right now. Who knows what the future holds? We just might get AI avatars that we can utilize outside in the physical world. Maybe that's what life is for us now and we just don't know it. You never really can know now, can you? Oh, and one more thing, you can also talk with AI personas. As of the time of this recording, you can converse with four different personas. The default is Merlin, which is a basic, friendly, informative chatbot. The second is Oppenheimer, the third is Barbie, and the fourth is Ted Lasso. Yes, you heard that right, Ted Lasso. I'm not sure how these personas came to be chosen, but here we are. Let's have a chat with Barbie. Hey Barbie, who's the hottest actress right now? Ding, 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 and it looks like the winner is Scarlett Johansson. Okay, so an argument can be made to the contrary, but not a bad pick, Barbie. Not a bad pick at all. Next, let's talk about the chat with your documents feature that's available on Merlin. Let's upload this random article I found about how to code a hangman game and host it on a website. Once we upload the article, it will give us two choices. The first being give me a summary, and the second being tell me the key points. Let's go ahead and choose give me a summary. We can then ask a follow-up question, such as provide a list of the steps, with each step containing one paragraph. Now there's some other AI tools that I would like to cover in this beginner's tutorial. They are pretty straightforward. From the Merlin AI homepage under the product tab, you'll see a list of AI tools. The first we'll cover is the AI detector, where you simply upload a PDF file and click the Detect AI button. The next AI tool is the Plagiarism Checker, which also is pretty straightforward but can prove to be useful. Again, you just upload a file or pass the text you would like to check. The next tool I would like to talk about is the Chatbots feature. From the main homepage, click on the Chat with Merlin option from the top menu. Next, click on the Chatbots button. Here you will get a long list of chatbots that you can chat with. You can also create your own chatbot, but for the purposes of this beginner's tutorial, we will go ahead and pick the prompt scientist, which can prove to be very useful when wanting to create prompts that are effective. Let's go ahead and type, give me a prompt that will generate an image of a beautiful woman with the Swiss Alps in the background. Then we'll click the Generate button. We'll go ahead and copy the prompt that it generated for us by clicking on the clipboard to the right of the text box. Now we'll head over to Merlin's text to image generator called Bonkers. Back on the main home page under the product tab, you'll see an option for text to image dash bonkers under the productivity tab. Let's go ahead and press the create images for free button. And here we can paste the prompt that we generated from before. Notice that on the left side, we can choose our aspect ratio. I'll pick YouTube 16 by nine for the purposes of our demonstration here. Then on the right side, you have 38 different models to choose from. It's a little overwhelming with all the options, I think. It's like analysis paralysis for me sometimes. Doesn't it seem like too many choices is worse than just a few? Anyway, let's see here. Let's go ahead and choose the Diffusion Blend XL. We'll then press the Generate Arrow button. And there's our picture. You really can spend a while here if you wanted to. There's plenty of options to play around with. Now, heading back to the main home page, you'll once again see that there are over 70 AI tools that Merlin AI offers. And most of them are pretty self-explanatory. For the purposes of this beginner's tutorial, I covered the most useful ones I thought would be the most beneficial. Of course, there are other tools like the language translators, name generators, and rewording tools amongst many more. But in my opinion, all of these tools are pretty standard nowadays and are offered on a plethora of other platforms, including ChatGPT, Copilot, Google, and more. My suggestion is to just explore for what you need here as you need it. Have fun and use the many tools available through Merlin to your advantage. They can be a real-time saver and pretty fun as well. And with that being said, 
We come to the end of our Merlin AI tutorial for beginners. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know in the comments how you liked it and what type of video you would like to see next. Stay tuned for more in emerging tech. Until next time, this is G-Tier signing off. Take care, everyone.